for with laundry? No, okay. Thank you for coming and welcome mm -hmm. everybody to our little Bible study on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father God, um, you are so gracious and kind. Mm -hmm. and we thank you that we can come to you um, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Mm -hmm. And we know that, you know, he, only He is worthy. And we want, um, only He should get all the glory. And um, when that we will praise Your name, Lord Jesus, forever for what You've done for us on the cross. And Father, my prayer today is that people all over the world would have um, clarity concerning the spiritual gifts as we um, look into your word over these next three lessons, chapters 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians. And I ask you to give us all spiritual wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Patty, could yes. you please close that window? Yes. Okay. So, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is the purpose of gifts in the early church. And um, verses 1 through 11, Paul and the members at Corinth had different spiritual gifts. Then in verses 12 through 35, 31, the function of the supernaturally bestowed gifts and the unity of the body of Christ. Then, um, so we are going to be covering in chapters 12 through 14, um, Paul will answer questions concerning spiritual gifts. There's so much confusion about gifts, um, this, uh, supernatural gifts today, and uh, the study of these chapters should clear up any misconceptions uh, about them once and for all. The sign gifts were temporarily bestowed on the early church to minister to the body of Christ and to save the Jews next door. So what uh, some of the questions that we might ask when we enter this chapter is, what does no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed? And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost mean? Doesn't the Bible say, forbid not the speaking in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14, 39? And despise not, the pro despise not prophesyings in 1 Thessalonians 5, 20. Yes, that is biblical. Those verses are biblical, but we need to be dispensational also. So... Let's just summarize what chapter 12 said. Let me put this over here. So in chapter, I mean chapter 11, um, it was reproof concerning Christian order and the Lord's Supper. Okay. So before we go into our actual study, let's go over our timeline a little bit. So, in 2 Timothy 2.15, it says that we should um, study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we need to divide the word of truth. All of the Bible is truth. And we need to divide um, our truth for the body of Christ, the mystery, from the rest of the Bible. We need to know all of the Bible, but we need to distinguish which part is directly to and about us, and which part is for us. So all of the Bible is for us, but this part here, Romans to Philemon, is directly to us. So, um, God has worked with supernatural signs throughout the ages. Okay, so, um, uh, so yeah, just to review, in 
Chapter 11, Paul corrected the Corinthians about the order in the church and their need to reform their conduct when sharing in the Lord's Supper. God doesn't chastise the believer according to the law today because we're not under the law. We are under grace. Yes, we're <laughs> under grace. So um, God doesn't punish people in the dispensation of grace with physical events, but believers are chastened and instructed by His Word and by other people and by members in the body of Christ. Hebrews through Revelation was written to Israel um, uh, to help them get through the tribulation and into the kingdom on earth. God will chasten Israel um, because he will once more shake during the tribulation. He will once more shake the earth, not only the earth, but also the heaven. That's in Hebrews 12, 3 through 29. He talks about how he chastens physically, which is, he does physical ch chastening with Israel, but not with the body of Christ. Israel will be chastened as God levies the last part of the fifth court of punishment on them. Okay, so this punishment of the nation of Israel during the seven years of tribulation is because of their spiritual adultery over the centuries. For centuries they committed spiritual adultery back here. Um, and so um, he's going to levy this wrath on them and also for the purpose of purifying to himself a special people of kings and priests out of Israel who believe in Je that Jesus of Nazareth is their Messiah. Mm -hmm. So the 490 years or 70 weeks spoken of Daniel the prophet in Daniel 9, 24 through 27 began with the finishing of the wall about around Jerusalem. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will arrive. Um, he did arrive right here. Can you see me? So Jesus Christ did arrive right here, right here, um, at the 69th week, according to Daniel's um, 70th week. He arrived right on time. And then he's, um, you know, after his death, burial, and resurrection, and his ascension, he will, um, he appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus, and then he will come back also at the end of the 70th week, at the second coming of, um, his second coming, which ends the time of the Gentiles. This ends the time of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. which is in um, mentioned in Luke 21, 24. It will be complete then. But we, in the body of Christ, see this where it says Romans eleven twenty five right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Romans eleven twenty five indicates that we're living in the Israel's blindness. And when the fullness of the Gentiles is complete, which is the rapture, then God will restart his dealings with Israel. Okay, um, let me just mention that God did give Israel one ex year extension of mercy, which um, added to that 69 years, weeks, one year. Okay, that was like a bonus year. Mm -hmm. But um, he ins God inserted between the 69th and the 70th week the mystery. He inserted the mystery between those those weeks. Okay. So um, now, okay. So going back to talk about sign gifts. Okay. Um, also, you know, if we close the chart, God will resume His program with Israel after the rapture, just like the, this dispensation of grace never even was here. Okay, so God used sign gifts in the past during um, the time of Moses. He gave the, the you know signs for Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
He used the sign gifts um, with Elijah, which he came right after David there, after the, the um, dividing of the kingdom. And um, the Lord Jesus Christ used sign gifts to show, you know, that he was the Messiah. He healed the sick and cast out the devils. And um, he gave the sign gifts to 12 apostles also. And um, the Holy Ghost descend, descended after, uh, you know, on, on Pentecost, on the 120 in the upper room, and believers there, and gave them sign gifts. God will use signs in the tribulation, right there. He will use sign gifts during the tribulation, when he resumes his dealings with Israel, the 144,000 uh, Jews will use signs. Um, the two witnesses in Jerusalem will use signs. And the believing remnant will use signs, as it says in Mark 16, 15 through 20. Unfortunately, Satan has and will also use signs. So, um, you remember, if you can follow me, Maureen, all the way over here. See, Job, okay, so Abraham had, you know, Isaac and Jacob, and then the 12 tribes. And then Job was a descendant of Issachar. And we know that Satan used signs against Job. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, so... Um, through Pharaoh's magician at the time of Moses, Satan used signs. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, and he, um, and he, if you can follow me back to our, you know, 70th week here of tribulation. In the middle of the tribulation, um, Satan will enter um, Antichrist and do signs through Antichrist and also through the false prophet. So um, I would like to add something about <clears throat> the 70th week here. Um, so I believe that Jeze both Jezebel, which is mentioned in Revelation 2.20, mm -hmm. and the strange woman in Proverbs, um, it's in Proverbs 2.16 and other places in Proverbs, the strange woman, mm -hmm. represent the false religious system that is against God. It's not really a, a woman. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a false religious system. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the woman clothed with the sun in Revelation 12.10, 12, 12.1, 12, I mean, mm -hmm. is believing Israel. The, the harlot, Mystery Babylon, is the city uh, where the false religious system is in effect, which will be replaced at, um, at the end of the, with the coming down of um, the New Jerusalem at, at the end of the thousand year reign. So um, now I will want you to come over here. And I want you to see the fall and diminishing during the Acts period, right here. Can you see see this? Okay. So during this fall and diminishing is the you know Acts, the book of Acts. It explains this. And it ends here in Acts twenty eight. Acts twenty eight. Mm-hmm. So during the, the, this Acts period, Paul was going to the Jews all over the world to tell them that God has now, had now changed the dispensation and was working through him. And he wrote during that Acts period, first Galatians, then Thessalonians, then Corinthians, and then Romans. 
So by the time he finished Rome, you know, the letter to the Romans and got to Rome, when he got to Rome, he gave the Roman uh, Jews one more opportunity. He gathered them all together after his third day of being there and gave them an opportunity to accept what God was doing through him. And um, many of them um, didn't accept that. So he put them aside. He put the Jews aside for the last and final time at that time. No, was that the little flock? No, that was the Jews, uh, oh, Patty. The Jews, the Jews oh. that came in, in Rome, he oh. put the Jews aside. Oh, so, Jesus. yeah, so the Jews were now put aside, and Paul said that he was going to go to the Gentiles and that they would hear the message. And so now the diminishing and the fall of Israel is complete. And after that time, Paul and nobody else had any of the spiritual signs. The spiritual signs were over. Okay? The they ended. They ended at the end of Acts. And that's the tongue speaking. Yeah, all tongue. of that. And we're going to oh. go over that today. Okay. So you'll, okay. you'll, you'll, by the time you, we finish today, you'll have it mm -hmm. sound. Don't worry. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So um, what? Um, so n Paul did not have the gift of healing after um, the Acts period. So he um, was not able to heal Aphrodite, mm -hmm. and he was not able to heal Trophimus. Okay. So um, let's. Um, Go over here now. Do you have any references of... Uh, yes, I do. I do. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, 2 Timothy 4.20 for Trophimus. And Epaphroditus. Let me see. I have it written down. Sure. And hopefully, wh while we go through sure. this, I'll, I'll find it. Okay. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's in the Philippians, but we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so um, there are no men and women who have the gifts of prophecy or tongues today. All the gifts ended at the end of the Acts period. They were only for the early church. We are instructed by His Word today and have His Spirit in us. Women are about... <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, I'll get it back. Okay. Okay. It's a little breeze. Yeah, it's good, Patty, if you close that all the way. Because we have it cooling up today. Alright, there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so women saying? are allowed to speak in church today. Women are allowed. Mm -hmm. Um but it must be done with respect for the pastor and respect for the men and women in the assembly. No one is to be domineering. We are to be polite, courteous, and say things for the purpose of edifying the church in an orderly and timely fashion. The Bible is clear that women should not be pastors, but we can teach the Bible and labor in the ministry. Paul and the Corinthians were given Israel's signs temporarily during the Acts period. Paul said the Jews require a sign in 1 Corinthians 1.22. When the men of Israel who were in the synagogue in Corinth saw that the signs had been given to Paul and the Corinthians next door, they were provoked to jealousy. And that's in Romans 11.11. Let's go there. Romans 11, 11. Um, whoever gets there first can read it. Got it. Okay, go ahead, Patty, real loud. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. Okay, so salvation has come to the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to jealousy. 
And when they realized that God was now working through Paul and the Corinthians, many wanted to believe God. First, the Jews learned that Jesus of Nazareth really was their Messiah. And then many learned that God was now um, would save anyone who would believe, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, which says that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Paul said that the sign gifts would cease during the Acts period in 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13. Let's go there. Maureen, can you please read that? 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13. Oh, no man anything. Oh, no, no. 1 Corinthians 13. I'll, I'll read Sorry. I'll, I'll read it. <laughs> Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So this is talking about the infancy of the body of Christ. And, um, or the body in the church in its infancy. For now we see, during the letter to the Corinthians, through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. So, so the but then there is when um, the perfect is come. So uh, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. So that which is perfect is the total revelation of the mystery to Paul, the, our apostle. Then that which is in part, you know, uh, this, this Acts period and the need for sign gifts will be done away with. Okay, so these signs finished um, when the diminishing of Israel was finished. Um, that's in Romans 11.12. Could you please read Romans 11.12, Maureen? Sure. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Okay, so he's saying here that um, Israel is be, um, fall it results in the um, riches of the world, and the diminishing of Israel is uh, results in the riches of the Gentiles, but how much more their fullness when God resumes his dealings with them here um, will be wonderful. It will be amazingly great for Israel um, when, when uh, God deals with them again. So, um, let's see. During Acts, he went to the Jew first to inform them that God had changed dispensations and then to the Greek. As he says in Romans 1.16, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. At the end of Acts, Paul set Israel aside for the third and final time. And he had first said, I'm setting them aside in Acts 13.46. Then he said it again in Acts 18.6. And then he said it for the last time and third and final time in Acts 28.28. He told the Jews, let it be known to you that salvation, uh, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. That's what he said in, when he set him aside last time in Acts 28, 28. By this time, Paul had received the full revelation of the mystery, even if it had not been written down. What time? Um, Romans 15, 29 talks about this. At the end of Acts, he had the full revelation, but it hadn't been written down. However, the canon of Scripture was not complete until Paul finished the writing of 2 Timothy. 
Okay? So that's when the can of scripture was complete. So let's go to Romans 15, 29, and I'll read that. Romans 15, 29 says this. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So he may, that may indicate that he had the full uh, gospel at that time. Because when Paul says, my gospel, mm -hmm. he doesn't just mean, you know, one or two verses in of what he's written. He means the entire Romans to Philemon, all 13 letters. Okay, so let's move on. Paul no longer had the gifts of healing after the Acts period. Okay, here I have it now, uh, uh, verse. Okay. Philippians, uh, Paul could not heal Aphrodite. That's in Philippians 2.27. Let's read that. And then, Patty, why don't you read 2 Timothy 4.20. So let's go to um, Maureen. Why don't you read Philippians two twenty seven? Yeah. For indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Paul couldn't heal him. You know he. He was praying, and he was, and he was taking care of him. He wanted him to be healed. Okay, and so he was happy that he recovered. And then, uh, Patty, go ahead with with uh, 2 Timothy 4.20. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Melentum sick. Mm -hmm. He had to leave um, Trophimus sick in Melentum. My litum, my litum. Yeah. So the sign gifts ended in Acts 28. Mm -hmm. They've been gone. They've ended for a long time. But the Jews can still be saved and, and become members of the body of Christ. So God made a covenant of sight with Israel. He deals with Israel physically through physical signs, but He deals with the body of Christ spiritually. So, um, let's take a look at this covenant of sight with Israel mm -hmm. and the physical signs. So, let's turn to Exodus 34.10. Maureen, could you please read that to us? Exodus 34.10. And then, Patty, mm -hmm. you can do uh, Psalm 74.9. Psalm So now we're uh, the, the sight. Mm -hmm. Covenant, of, covenant sight. of sight. Yeah, go uh -huh. ahead, Maury. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. Mm -hmm. Terrible meaning magnificent. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to do magnificent things with Israel. Um, and they shall see. They see. That's the covenant sight. Um, so, yeah. uh, Patty, go yeah. ahead and read. Um, let's see. What, what Psalm 74 9. Psalm 74 9. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Okay. So, neither is there, there among. Us any that knoweth how long. Okay, so that's what Israel complained about. They didn't see their signs, uh -huh. and they didn't have you know any prophet speaking for God. Uh -huh. And we don't know how long it's going to be. Uh, you know how long we have to endure. Uh -huh. So, um, God dealt with them physically and visually. Uh -huh. um, Luke eleven twenty nine. Um, I have verse 22, let me see. Let's do um, Luke 11, 20 and 29. Let's see if that's a typo. Okay, Luke 11, 
20. No, uh, let me see. Okay, so Jesus said, But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. So it was a sign to Israel when Jesus cast out devils that he was Messiah. And then in Luke um, 20, no, 11, 29, it says, And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. So Jesus, you know, did the sign of Jonas the prophet. So some spiritual gifts were promised to Israel as a sign of their impending kingdom on earth. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's turn to Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. Patty, you want to read those? Okay. Isaiah 35, but we should all look together. Oh, okay. Isaiah. Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. So these are signs to Israel for their impending king, kingdom coming. These are signs. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Okay, so when, you know, John the, 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 uh, John's disciples came to Jesus, mm -hmm. they... They asked Jesus, you know, um, on John's behalf, you know, are you the one who's going to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus mm -hmm. said to them, you know, tell John what you see, that the the blind can mm -hmm. see and the deaf mm -hmm. can hear, mm -hmm. and um, you know, the lame walk. So these are the signs that we just read here. So um, Jesus had done these signs. The blind were able to see, and the deaf were able to hear, and the lame man, you know, leaping at like a heart, heart or a deer, is happened, you know, when Peter and John went to the temple, right? And so these were all signs for Israel that um, Christ's kingdom was come to earth. Um, let's look at another one. Go to Mark sixteen seventeen. Mark sixteen seventeen. Um, Patty, do you want to read that one? Now, if someone doesn't have a King James Bible, they might be missing these verses. So, what does 1617 say, Patty? You want me to read it? Do you have it? Yeah. yeah. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Okay. And then if you look at the um, at sixteen. 20 there, at the very end it says, um, confirming the word with signs following. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, they were, you know, followed by these signs. So, um, let's, um, let me read um, verse 18 also. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So the believing remnant during the tribulation will be able to do these signs. We are not able to do these signs today. Don't pick up a, a serpent or a snake, uh, because, you know, especially poisonous ones, you know, because we they could hurt us. And we're not able to lay our hands on someone and say, you know, and heal them but they will be able to during the tribulation. So let's turn now to Luke 9, 1 and 2. Patty, why don't you read that? 
Luke 9, 1 and 2. Okay. So, Luke 9, 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God to heal the sick. Okay. So the little flock of believers, actually there were 70 of here. Um, well, the 12 disciples, um, but the, he sent out the, the 70 at one point. But he gave these 12 disciples here, he gave them power and authority over devils and to cure diseases. So he gave them the mm -hmm. gift of healing and sent them to preach the kingdom of God. The message of the kingdom of, of the gospel of the kingdom here, mm -hmm. and to heal the sick. So this is not the gospel of grace that we have in this dispensation. Yeah, it's right there. Paul had the signs of an apostle. Let's look at that. Acts nineteen eleven and twelve. Maureen, Acts nineteen eleven and twelve. This is showing that Paul had the signs of an apostle. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Okay, so during the transition time, during the Acts per uh, period, um, Paul was able to uh, do these special miracles that a handkerchief that had touched him or an apron, if it touched someone that was sick, they would be healed. And um, also evil spirits went out from them if they touched that handkerchief. Um, 2 Corinthians 12.12, 12, Patty. 2 Corinthians 12.12. 12. For as the body is one and hath mem no, many... No, Second Corinthians. Oh, Second Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll read it. Okay. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders, and mighty deeds. So Paul says to the Corinthians in his second letter that he did the signs of the apostles there. Hmm. He raised the dead. Uh, Patty, you want to do that one? Acts 20, verse 9 and 10. Second or first? Acts, oh, just, Acts. Yeah, Acts 20, um, 9 and 10. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. Perfect. Patty, what was the last verse in a word in nine? Dead. Dead. So he was dead and Paul mm. raised him from the dead. Mm. Okay. So that, you know, was amazing that, you know, Peter and Paul both could raise the dead. Yeah. So um, now I want to just talk a little bit about the difference between um, spiritual gifts and talents to clear up any confusion. So we need to distinguish between spiritual gifts and talents. Talents are not spiritual gifts. Talents are skills in things like music, art, sports, and so on that are the result of heredity, environment, and hard work. So to desire sign gifts today is foolish and leads to deception. Nobody has the supernaturally bestowed sign gifts today. But the principles of unity still apply to us. The Word of God is complete and all-sufficient for the ministry. 
That's in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. That we can be thoroughly um, equipped. And it must be studied God's way. It must be rightly divided. 2 Timothy 2, 15. We can use skills that we have learned to bless the body of Christ. And if we want Bible knowledge, we must study. If we study it, rightly divided, God will give us illumination. So let's get into our study of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 now. Okay, turn to first, um, the first verse. Maureen, could you read that? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Okay, so Paul is answering their question concerning spiritual gifts, and he doesn't want them to be ignorant, which means unknowledgeable. So, um, verse 2, Patty. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Okay, so let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 1.9. 1 Thessalonians 1.9. So Paul has just made the point that before they were saved, they were idol worshipers. Now remember, we, are, he, we found out that Corinthians was written during the diminishing period during the Acts. Okay? Mm -hmm. And Thessalonians was too. Okay? So, 1 Thessalonians 1 9, who's there? Mm -hmm. Who wants to read it? Okay, I'll read it. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So, the Thessalonians were also idol worshipers. All the Gentiles were, okay? They were all idol worshippers before they were saved. Because they were, you know, superstitious, trying to figure out, you know, how the world came into being mm -hmm. before they heard the truth. Okay, v verse 3 of 1 Corinthians, Patty. Uh, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Okay, so this is the, the interesting uh, part here, okay, so Paul just said that I want, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So Paul is actually referring to how they can discern if someone who is prophesying during this early church period is speaking the you know for God mm -hmm. because um, and so this is um, Paul is giving them this this the instruction on how to discern if someone is speaking for God when they prophesy because prophecy or prophesying is speaking for God, while tongues is speaking to God, okay, or about God, um, and, and not a false teacher. This is how they can discern if someone is a false teacher, um, as m mentioned in verse 10. Go over to 12.10, and look at 12.10 with me. It says here, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. See that discerning of spirits? Mm -hmm. This is how someone can discern the spirits to know if in the early church someone is, you know, prophesying for God the truth and not, you know, a false um, prophet. Okay. So, accursed means doomed to destruction. No one can say anything against Christ or call Him Lord if they are speaking by the Spirit. Today, the gifts of prophecy is not in effect because we have the complete Word of God. In English, it's found in the King James Bible. However, we must still discern 
what God's Word says and which Bible teachers are worth listening to. The mark of a good Bible teacher are, are they a saved King James Bible believer who teaches the Word of God rightly divided and are they knowledgeable and apt to teach? Verse 4, Maureen 12, 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Okay, so the same Spirit gave different gifts to people. Um, verse 5, um, Maureen. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Okay, so um, the Lord administered the gifts differently. Verse 6, um, Maureen. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which worketh all in all. Okay. So, um, God operates the gifts differently. The gifts had different functions. Now, notice what Maureen just read. She read that in verse 4, it's the same Spirit. In verse 5, it's the same Lord. In verse 6, same God. So there, the Trinity is there. The whole Godhead is mentioned. So each person of Godhead is spirit. God is spirit and must be worshipped in spirit and truth. That's what Jesus said in John 4.24. The context will tell us which one of the Godhead is speaking are being referred to uh, when we say the Holy Spirit. If it is the Holy Ghost, it will use, you know, say Holy Ghost specifically in the King James Bible. Verse 7, Patty. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. Okay. Gifts were divinely given by the Spirit for the purpose of profiting all members in the early church. Let's turn to Romans 12, 3 through 8. This is another instance where Paul talks about spiritual gifts. And I'll read these verses. Romans 12, 3 through 8. This will give us more insight into spiritual mm -hmm. gifts during this transition period. Because Romans, of course, as we know, is another one of the letters written during this diminishing period. Oh, when the, so when they're dimishi, diminishing. The, the, gifts. Dimi the gifts were diminishing and ended. They oh. diminished and uh -huh. stopped. Yeah, they, the okay, gifts diminished and stopped. He's still writing. When he, Paul wrote Romans, mm -hmm. the gifts were still in effect because he the Acts ministry, it was written during, Romans was written during Acts 20, remember? Uh -huh. Okay. So okay. the, uh, the, um, the, the gifts were still in effect. It had, they hadn't gotten to Acts 28 yet. Okay. So Acts All right, 20, no. it, it hadn't stopped. Okay. Are you getting clarity? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. All right. That's so what we want. That's we're what we're question. Okay. Romans what? We're in Romans 12, 3 through 8. Okay. So here's another instance in another mm -hmm. of the Acts epistles mm -hmm. where Paul talks about spiritual gifts. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office or gift, right? so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on the ministering, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhorteth on the exhortation, he that giveth, let him give it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So Paul went over several gifts at that time, hmm. just now. 
So um, let's go now to 1 Corinthians, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we are, we'll read verse 8. Um, whose turn is it? Patty, go ahead. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Okay, good. Okay, now go over to um, verse uh, chapter 13. Mm-hmm. Okay, and look at verse 8. Whether there be, at the end of it, it says, Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was a gift of knowledge mm -hmm. um, that he's talking about. He's not talking about knowledge that we have now. Mm -hmm. He's talking about a supernatural giving of knowledge. Like okay. Divine knowledge? Divinely given knowledge. Yeah. Okay, so um, will vanish away. Will vanish away. So that that yeah. And Pat, Patty, go ahead and read verse nine. For we know in part. No, to another. Oh, oh, uh, where? Oh, okay, yeah, twelve. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Okay, and go ahead and read ten. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Okay. So, Paul just went through a list of different spiritual gifts mm -hmm. that the early church had. Mm -hmm. Okay. To illustrate what he just said. Okay. Mm -hmm. he, he had just said uh, before that, Okay, but the manifestation of the Spirit is uh, is given to every man to profit with all. Mm -hmm. So everyone had uh, some sign gifts of you know something that they could share in the early church to um, edify the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So he said um, he um, there was the word of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy. Discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, which is translation of a la um, foreign language spoken that they had never studied. They had never learned that foreign language. They were just supernaturally able to translate that foreign language or to speak that foreign language. So notice the discerning of spirits in um, that verse. Um, Verse 10, verse oh. 10 is in lowercase. Verse 10 mm -hmm. is in lowercase, see? Mm -hmm. uh, because it is the spirit in the man, whether he or she is speaking God's words. Mm -hmm. Paul told us that women were also prophesying um, and speaking in tongues in 11.5. Could you read 11.5 to us, uh, Maureen? But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one, as if she were shaven. Okay, so um, here you can see in this verse that the woman uh, was praying, you know, speaking in tongues, and, and she was prophesying mm. uh, at that time in the, this uh, Corinthian church. Mm. So when the Holy Ghost fell on the 120 in the upper room, those men and women also all had the gift of tongues mm -hmm. and were understood by those who spoke those different languages. Let's turn to Acts 1, 15 and 2, 4 through 12. And I'll, I'll read Acts 1, 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120, see? Mm -hmm. So they were, if you look up uh, to a 14, you can see that according to, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus mm -hmm. and his brethren, they were all part of that 120. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were women there. So let's go over now to um, chapter 2 of Acts. 
and a look a little bit closer, 4 through 12. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So there was Jews that had come from all the other nations for Pentecost. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and the Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in all parts of Libya, about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Now, proselytes are um, people who go from one religion to another. And so these were people that had become, um, you know, uh, Jews in believe the Jews religion oh. like Gentiles who converted yeah to convert Jews. in Arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God and they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what mean is this so that that was you know showing that it would they were under those foreign languages because they were real languages they were able to hear mm -hmm. uh, the language in their own um, you know he understand in their own language mm -hmm. so tongues are a spiritual gift that is being able to speak a language that you never formally studied or learned mm -hmm. it's a supernatural gift um, Patty can you read um, is it your turn to read or Maureen Okay, Maureen, verse 11, please. 12:11. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So the lifts of gifts all work by the self same Spirit who distributes several gifts as he wants. All right. Verse 12, Patty. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Okay. So, we are one body made up of many members working in unison. All are important, and no one is more important than the other. The members are all controlled by the same head, which is Jesus Christ. Let's look at Ephesians 1, 22, and 23. Uh, Maureen, Ephesians 1, 22, and 23. And then Patty, I'll give you Colossians 1, 18. So, Ephesians 1, 22. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Okay, so here we have the church, um, which is his body. Okay, we have Christ um, being the, uh, the head. And we saw that it was, and gave him, that's Jesus, to be the head over all things, the church, which is his body. Uh, let's turn now together to Colossians, because this is, these are some really incredible verses. Mm -hmm. Patty, can you do 118? Mm -hmm. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Okay, so the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the group of believers called the body of Christ. Um, Patty, could you read 24 also? Wait, let me see. Let me see if that's where I want you to go. Yeah, twenty-four. Colossians. Mm-hmm. Okay. One twenty-four. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind, of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for His body's sake, 
which is the church. Okay, so that's what Paul said. Okay, the 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 body of Christ is the church. So, um, Maureen, can you read Colossians two nineteen? And not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you see there, not holding the head, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, um, from which all the body of joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Let's turn to Ephesians 4. And read 16, Patty, please. 416. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay, and then 15, I should have had you read that too, but I'll read that. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So we've established that Christ is the head of the body of believers called the body of Christ. Um, so, uh, Maureen, can you read verse, uh, 13, 12, 13? This is a really important verse. Where is it again? First Corinthians 12, 13. Oh, 12. Because you just read 12, 12. Okay. Well. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Okay, so notice how we're baptized into one body. Mm -hmm. So this is a spiritual baptism and which has nothing to do with water. There's no water baptism today. That's a false doctrine. So let's go now and look at uh, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Romans 6, 3, and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Okay, so um, let's go over these verses just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 12, 6, 3, and 4. And notice that there's no water here. And to add water here is to um, ruin what Paul just said. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus, not baptized into water, baptized into Jesus, mm -hmm. Christ, were baptized into his death. So we identified with his death that he died on the cross. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we also identify with his burial and his resurrection, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So now we, we are, our old man, who we were before we were saved, has been crucified. We're not who we were, but now we can walk in newness of life by faith. Um, we, we walk by faith in mm -hmm. what Christ has done for us and in his word what he says to us. So, um, what was that last reference that you read from? I just read Romans 6, 3, and 4 again. Oh, 6, mm -hmm. 3, and 4. Mm -hmm. 
three and four. Oh, okay. Yeah, just read exactly what you had read. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, the body of Christ is one made up of Jews and Gentiles. Patty, can you read Galatians 3.28? Mm -hmm. And we all partake of the same spirit. Galatians 3. What was it? 328. 328. Okay. This is one we should all memorize. Ne there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So the body of Christ is all one unit, all one team. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we we're, we're all have our head in, in believing in him as in common. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, Maureen, can you read 14, 12, 14? For the body is not one member, but many. Okay, so the body of Christ is made up of many members, and Paul will now use the human body as an analogy for the body of Christ. Patty, mm -hmm. can you read verse 15, 1 Corinthians 12, 15? Mm-hmm. If the foot shall say, because am not, I, I am, am not, not the hand. hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Mm -hmm. So, Patty, if mm -hmm. your foot should mm -hmm. say that he's not the hand, yeah. is he still part of your body? Yes. Okay, good. Um, Maureen, verse, um, the next verse. And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So if the ear should say that he he's not the eye, is he still part of the body or not? Yes. Yes. Um, verse um, 17, Patty. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Okay, so if the whole body was just the eye, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't be able to hear, right? Mm -hmm. Be and, a cyclops. Yeah, you'd be <laughs> a cyclops. And, and if the whole, um, if, if and if you didn't have a nose, you wouldn't be able to smell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, verse eighteen, Maureen. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased Him. Okay. So, uh, God has placed every member in the body the way he wants. Um, Patty, verse 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? Yeah, so if we were all just one eye, mm -hmm. if we all were just exactly the same, cookie yeah. cutters, yeah. you know, um, we wouldn't have the whole body. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we need the diversity, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Um Next verse, Maureen. Is that 20? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now are they many members, yet but one body. Mm. Many members. Okay, so we, we, you know, we need a complete body, not just yeah. one eye, right? Yeah. So if everyone had the same gift, the body of Christ would be limited. But since everyone is different and has different gifts, the body of Christ can function as a unit. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, Patty. And the high and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Yeah, we have such an intimate relationship in the body of Christ. So even though we don't have the gifts now, we're using some of these principles mm -hmm. to talk about the unity of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we all need each other, you know, we are team members of a team, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll read the next verse. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Mm -hmm. We even need those members who seem to we be weak. Members that we think are less important are really more important. Mm -hmm. Patty, can you read 23? And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Okay, so Paul says that we should bestow more honor on those we think are less honorable, 
then the less appealing members will become more attractive. Many of you know I have a daughter with Down syndrome. Hitler and many in society would exterminate people like her thinking that they are less valuable. But I have learned and keep learning so much from her about how to give and show unconditional love and care for others. She is the greeter for our Bible study. And when um, Nam from Vietnam came the first time, Grace ran to meet her at the door and gave her a big hug saying, I love you. I could see Nam melt and relax. I could tell she felt special immediately. Grace excels in social skills. She naturally has a doctorate degree in communicating love. <laughs> I, I can never hope to achieve to her level. She is a joy to be around and if you ever come to visit here, I hope that you will get a great big Gracie hug. Verse 24, Maureen. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lack. Okay, so the attractive members have no need of more honor. God, when he says tempered the body together, that word tempered means duly mixed. He's duly mixed the body of Christ together so that there was a mixture of gifted people and he gives more abundant honor to the part that seems to be less and it is not but it's not spiritual uniformity it is but spiritual unity so everyone is not you know it's not a homogenous mixture mm -hmm. it's more of a fruit salad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. fruit, fruit, it's more of a fruit salad oh uh, so you know that's all those pieces of different fruit makes the salad so nice and so um, it's not uniformity the, it's unity it's unity so we should not prefer one person above another and there should be genuine camaraderie okay verse 26 patty and whether one member suffer all the members suffer with it or one member be honored all the members rejoice with it. So we suffer if one of us suffers. And we rejoice or cheer if one of us is honored. There's no room for favoritism. Okay? Oh, we oh. left out 25. Oh, do we? Mm hmm Okay, let's go back to that. Oh, yeah, you did. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. Why don't you read that? Uh, that there should be no... Schism. Schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Okay, so when some members do not follow the leading of the head, there can be strife and division, like there was in Corinth. Mm -hmm. We should love each other like a family, and there should be no division, only unity. Mm -hmm. We should not prefer one person above another, there should be genuine, genuine camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I had that. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, okay, what is the will of God? God's will is that all, all men, men be, be saved, saved and, and, and all, all men come to the knowledge, knowledge of, the truth. of the truth. Okay? So, we're, we want to glorify God. This, we want to be part of what did, this happening in the dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. And so, we're, you know, all about that. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we're a team. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, verse 28, Maureen. Oh no, 27 first. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Okay, so we are one team made up of distinct and different members. And go ahead and read 28 also, Maureen. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Okay, so Paul ranks gifts in 
um, the early church in the order of importance. So it was first apostles, second prophets, um, then teachers, workers of miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, and guess what was last? The speaking of tongues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our Apostle Paul was the first member of the body of Christ, as we know in 1 Timothy 1.16. And he was our pattern. The prophets were able to speak God's word after they had been revealed by Paul to Paul. So first the words were revealed to Paul, and then the prophets were able to speak those words that had already been revealed to Paul. The prophets could also discern which letters of Paul were inspired by the Holy Spirit and the order they should be placed in the Bible. There are no apostles, prophets, miracle workers, tongues, or any other spiritual gifts today. They have all ceased a long time ago. Um, before, you know, before, you know, right after Paul got to Rome, they ended. So now, verse 29, Patty. Are all pro apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Keep you know, 30. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? What do you think, Patty? No. No. Not uh, even in the um, in Corinth, not everyone had the same gift. Mm -hmm. They did not all speak with tongues, for example. Verse 31, Maureen. But Cabert. Um, covet. covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So, Paul will mention which of the gifts they were to covet when we get to chapter 14. But first he will show us a more excellent way in chapter 13. For the gifts are to function in conjunction with the graces. And he will also explain the temporary nature of the gifts, in chapter 13 that we already had a sneak preview today we do not need spiritual gifts today because we have something much better we have the complete Word of God and we have the Spirit of uh, His Holy Spirit in us let's mm -hmm. look at Ephesians 3 16 Ephesians 3 16 why don't you read that Patty we'll finish this and then we'll do our homework and then um, Maureen, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, okay, go ahead, Pat. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Okay, so we have the spirit of God that strengthens us in our inner man. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read 17 too, Patty. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, keep going, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Keep going, and to know the love of Christ, which patheth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. That's good. That's mm. good. I'm going to go yeah. all the way there on my oh. notes. Oh. oh. Yeah, the, so. the the great yeah, love of that. yeah the great love of God the mm -hmm. love of Christ and mm -hmm. filled with all the fullness of God you know we have the spirit he, we have the the whole Godhead within us okay and so um, and we have his complete word which he uses to instruct us and to teach us and the, with the Holy Spirit in us we um, the, his preserved, um, inspired word can be illuminated to us. Mm -hmm. So um, may we all be able to open our mouths boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, as it says in Ephesians six nineteen, because there's so much opposition to this knowledge that we have just 
receive. Mm -hmm. uh, let's pray for one another. Um, please pray for me as I do these um, studies, and I'm trying to finish um, the you know the last few chapters of First Corinthians, and I want it to be accurate, and I want to it to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever I do, so um, please pray that you know I will do a good job, and that we can finish. And Maureen and Patty are proofreading um, my my chapters, and I thank them for that. Let's turn now to our homework and um, through the book of books by Lori Verstegen, page one eighty five, and then um, I just want to say that. For um, learning how to rightly divide God's secret, it's available on Amazon, and it has um, several pictures. It has a lot of pictures that um, will help you as it goes through the entire Bible in a hundred pages. And then this book here, uh, uh, Romans: A Concise Commentary, is a great tool for understanding the Book of Romans. So now, um, in um, let's go to the middle of the page. So, the body of Christ, read 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. What else does the Holy Spirit do for us in 1 Corinthians 12, 13? He baptizes us uh, into the body of Christ. Perfect, Patty. All believers in this age of grace are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. To what does Paul compare the body of Christ? Um, Maureen? The human body. Good. Your body is made up of many members that are all important. Because they are all controlled by the same head, they each do what is best for your body as a whole, and your body functions as it should. Your head would not tell your hand to punch your nose and your foot to step on another. Similarly, the body of Christ is made up of many members, each with its own gifts and none more important than the other. When we each allow Christ, who is the head, to lead us, the body functions as God intended it to and brings him glory. However, when some members do not follow the leading of the head, there is strife and division as there was in Corinth. So let's um, stop there and have a word of prayer, and we'll finish page 186 um, next week when we do chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Dear Father in heaven, in Jesus' name we come before you, and we praise you and thank you for your spiritual enlightenment of your word, and that we have something better than the spiritual gifts now. We have your word, and we have your spirit in us. and. We thank you, Lord, for um, saving our souls and for how exciting your word is. Mm -hmm. And we pray that this um, lesson on spiritual gifts, that you would give the increase, Lord, and send it to whoever needs to know that there are no spiritual gifts that are operating in this dispensation of grace anymore. Mm -hmm. and there haven't been for a long time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.